In this video folks, we want to show you some items that we've purchased for our camper van that we think you'll find very useful. So the first thing I want to talk about folks is an extension cable. This is the cable you would use if you were staying somewhere with a 240 volt hookup. When we purchased our camper van we bought a starter kit and one of the things that was in that starter kit was a 10 metre cable. Now obviously everything that you are putting in a camper van takes up space so the idea is not to have anything more than you need. So 10 metre cable sounded like a good idea. So when we arrived at Clamberis Touring Park which was our first day for our camper van we pulled up on the pitch and I quickly realised that the 10 metre cable wasn't really long enough. We had to position the van in such a way as to make the cable reach. Now this proves that 10 metres isn't really the cable length that I would recommend. I would recommend at least 15 metre cable if not 20 metre cable and I'm quite sure we'll be purchasing one of those very soon. We got away with the 10 metre cable because ultimately we parked within the middle of the pitch but had, if we were setting up a large awning, for instance, I think it would have been a bit of a problem. So although 10 metres sounded a good idea at the time, I actually would recommend 15 or 20 metres. So the next thing I would definitely recommend is a 240 volt adapter for the extension cable. What this does is it converts the cable that you would normally use for a hookup at the campsite to a 240 volt plug, which means if you're staying at relatives or friends, you can plug into their electric have a bit of an argument or discussion how much you're going to pay for that electric and you can use your camper van safe in the knowledge that you've got 240 volts. So the next thing I would recommend is obviously some form of heating. Now we're lucky in our Camper King van because we have a Webasto diesel heater and we've realised that not only does it pump out a whole lot of heat very quickly but it's very efficient, it uses very little diesel. But what if you haven't got a diesel heater or if the diesel heater goes wrong? So for us, we went for the option, and I'll show you, because we've got it running at the moment, a little oil-filled radiator. Let's put you back. Why did we go for the oil-filled radiator? Well, for a start, it doesn't make any noise. Yes, the heat that it generates, of course, is less. But when it does go off, the heat still comes from the heater for a while, because obviously the heat's retained in the oil of the radiator. And remember folks, if you're hooked up to a campsite with electricity, you've already paid for the electricity, you may as well use it. Next thing is an extension cable. So on our van we have two 240 volt sockets, which is great, but we quickly realise that when we're using the heater and the TV, and there's always other items that we find that we want to use, we run out of sockets very quick. And we run out of where we wanted the sockets. So a good old fashioned extension cable is a must. The next thing I would definitely recommend is some kind of insulation for the glass. So for the front windscreen and the front doors we have an internal insulation that sticks literally to the glass. You can get a bit of condensation with them but they work really well, they're easy to install, they don't take up much room in the van but there are other options including ones that wrap around the outside of the van. There's a company called Rainbow Screens that do some really funky pop top roof covers and windscreen covers and you can have all sorts of graphics put on there including eyes and they, they do look really nice. We may purchase one one day but we are very happy with the internal screens. Another thing we need to insulate of course is a pop top roof because effectively the material is basically like a tent. It is waterproof, it will resist most weather conditions but it doesn't retain the heat in the van and of course we want it to last as long as possible so we have purchased a pop top cover ours is purchased from a company called Camper Van Couture and I'll put a link in the description below you give them the measurements they make your pop top cover they're easy to install they don't take up much room and they come in a handy little bag and hopefully it will give many more years of life for our pop top if you're ever going to use your camper van off grid you're going to need a leisure battery now, when we ordered our van, we ordered an additional leisure battery, so we obviously have two. And the idea behind that was, if we do stay off grid, we should be able to have power for at least three or four days. And while we're talking about leisure batteries, a thing to consider, although we haven't got one yet fitted on this vehicle, is a solar panel. 
A solar panel, of course, will be a great way of topping up the leisure battery and will basically give you more power for longer. So we haven't got one on our van yet. We'll see how we get on. Haven't done any off-gridding yet. Watch your space. Next thing I want to show you is kettles. In the UK, at least, we do love a good cup of tea. I love a cup of tea and a biscuit, so we have to have a kettle. Well, there's some fantastic kettles that take up very little room that's available, both electric and for the hob, because they collapse. They're absolutely excellent. I'll show you a couple now. Now, this one is an Outwell. In fact, there's a lot of collapsible Outwell products out there. Pop it up. And there you have it. One kettle for the hob. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Highly recommended. But what if you don't want to use the gas or you haven't got gas in your van? No problem. There's an electric version. The links for all these products will be in the description below, folks. So this is an electric one. So again, it's doing exactly the same. Easily holds enough water for two cups of tea. So that's absolutely great. It's quite a low wattage, so it shouldn't trip any hookups that you might plug into on a campsite. Fantastic. Whilst we're on collapsibles from Outwell, they also do a number, and we've got plenty of them in the van, a number of bowls. And again, these are just collapsible. And of course, the beauty of this is space in a camper van is a premium. So there you have a bowl that didn't take up much space to store, but it's very useful. I love these. The next thing I want to show you is a multi-tool. Basically, you never know when you might need a screwdriver, pliers. There's obviously a wide range of choice for multi-tools. This one we purchased from Aldi, so there's going to be no link in the description for this one. But it's very simple. Again, takes up no room. It's got the pliers, lots of different screwdrivers, etc. in there. Very handy piece of kit. You never know when you're out camping that you might need it definitely recommend. So another thing, even if you're staying at a campsite, at night obviously it's dark. The only lighting really is normally by the amenities block. So we would definitely recommend you have a torch. Now this one is actually National Trust torch, but we like it because it has a belt clip and basically it just means you can hang it on your jeans and you've always got a light for when you're out and about on the night time. It sounds obvious, but it's good to have a torch. Whilst we're talking torches, this is something that we found online. This, made by Lucy, Lukey, you tell me folks. This is fantastic. You basically inflate this, I'm not gonna do it now, that goes to about that depth, it's solar powered and it's a light or a lantern and it's a very bright lantern and it will easily last most of the night on one charge. They're fantastic. Again, there'll be a link in the description at the bottom of the video. Cooking. Now, obviously we have a gas hob in our van, so we will obviously be doing some cooking. Ridge monkeys. These are absolutely fantastic. As you can see, they don't take up much size. There are different sizes available. They come in a nice protective cover, albeit a very tight protective cover that's not easy to get back on. When we open this up, we've got handy utensils stored inside. That's very good. And effectively, you can cook pretty much anything you want with these absolutely fantastic piece of kit and you can separate them if you want two pans if you think of how little room they take up in the van these are a must they are absolutely brilliant again a link in the description below so the next thing in our camper van we've got a, a modest 20 litre water tank now obviously that water needs treatment if you think that the van may have not been used for weeks you can't obviously leave the water that's in the tank, so we have to flush the water out. 
and then we use something called PuriClean. Readily available, Halfords and lots of different places. And basically with PuriClean, you have to dissolve a teaspoon of this for every four and a half litres of water. So we fill our tank up, leave it in there for a little while, and then we pump all of that out through the system. And then we put two lots of fresh water through the system. It takes a bit of time. And then we've got a clean system ready to use. Absolutely need to use that. Next thing I would recommend is a toaster. Now I love my toast in the morning. So here we have a toaster. This is a low wattage version. So basically it shouldn't be an issue when you're hooked up at the campsite. There is a limit of course to what power you can use at the campsite. It depends whether it's a 10 amp site or a 16 amp site. But I'll put at the bottom of this video what that means in wattage terms. But you'll realize that when you've got a kettle and you've got a toaster going, you need to be careful of what power you're using. Doesn't matter about TV, because the TV uses barely any power whatsoever. And the last one for today's video is wind deflectors. These are deflectors that fit on the front doors of the van. Yes, okay, they add a bit of style to the van. We purchase ours from Van X. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but the main reason that we purchase the deflectors is when you're camping at night, they basically mean that you can have the windows open just a little with no fear of any rain getting in and that provides the van ventilation. So obviously when we go camping there's two adults and two children in the van and you need airflow through the van to prevent most of the condensation that you're going to get in a camper van. These do a great job. We had very little condensation when we woke up in the morning. You're going to need some wind deflectors. There's plenty of different manufacturers that make wind deflectors for the transporter. And with the wind deflectors, doesn't matter if it's raining outside, the water's not coming in, absolutely fine. Definitely recommend wind deflectors for your van. So that's it, folks. Those are some of the items that we think you should consider having in your camper van. We hope you found it informative. If you have, please remember to hit the like button and please look for a link at the end of the video to subscribe. It's completely free to subscribe. It shows your support and it tells YouTube's algorithms that you like the video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.